Tree of Saviour is an MMORPG action-adventure hack-and-slash style game with anime-like character stylings. This game was suggested to me on my Maple Story 2 review, so I expected that it would likely be a similar thing. Just FYI, I will be making a lot of references to Maple Story 2, so if you don't know what that is, you might benefit from watching my review of that. My first experience with the game was a 3 to 4 hour download time and an hour long installation time. That may be more testament to my lacklustre internet and the power of my potato crap top, but the game is pretty sizeable, so you may have to wait a little for all the content to download. After downloading, I started up the game, and thus began the battle of the aspect ratio. I almost wrote this game off as unplayable, because the game opened in windowed mode, and there's no option to change the game aspect ratio settings before you load it up. So, the game opened part covered by my taskbar at the bottom of the screen, which was fine for the region select, but for the part in the lodge I was stumped, because I could only see up to about 2mm above the new character button, and I had no idea what I was supposed to be doing. I tried to find the settings, but they were also unfortunately within the portion of screen I couldn't reach, so my only option was to move my taskbar and get a bit more of the screen. That meant I could create a character, and after figuring out how it worked, I chose to be a sword boy. I carried on the game with this weird windowed mode, which also became a problem for the tutorials because the writing was less than ant sized and I was having to squint like a mong at my screen to try and figure out what it was saying so I could play the game. In the on screen footage from my play you can see a bunch of icons at the bottom right, one of which flags up the settings menu. I could not see that on my screen, obviously Bandicam picked up the rest of the window, but because I couldn't see it I had no idea how to change my screen. So I was stuck in windowed mode hell for two hours until I started looking for a save button and managed to flail my mouse over the menu that gave me the settings. Then huzzah, no more windowed mode. Once that whole debacle was settled, pretty much all my major problem with the game was fixed. It starts as one of those let's click some buttons until we figure out how this works games. It does introduce you with a bit of story before dumping you in an empty lodge and expecting you to get going. But once you figure out how to make it out the door, the game decides you deserve a help window to tell you what things are, despite writing the instructions in size 1 font. It also has pretty pictures for those of you that can't bear to read more than 5 words in a row. As for how the game plays, you run around with the arrow keys, mash some buttons to fight, and then get told that your rest mode is activated using the insert key and spending the next 10 minutes trying to find the insert key on your keyboard. I mean honestly, I've never known a game use the insert key for anything. I also have one of those sucky keyboards where you have to hold down the function button before you're allowed to press F4 so you can alt F4 your way out of existence. My insert button is hit by holding the function key and pressing the print screen key, which as you can imagine is just a waste of effort and highly inconvenient. I'm pretty sure you can change your keybinds, so god help you if you can't. The biggest focus for people who give the game bad reviews seems to be the devs or the owners of the game. There's been some poor rap given to bad management, but for someone more casual, I don't think that'll really affect you. I haven't seen any sign of bad management so far, so it's sort of out of sight, out of mind. The game gets regular updates, it's always in my downloads updating, so it's definitely not neglected by any rate. I think the burning question here is, is it like MapleStory 2? The short answer, pretty much. The long answer is, in terms of the way the game is played, controls, the open world maps and free roaming enemies, skill points, enemy respawns, ability to party up with other people online that are running around, dungeons, ability to fish, side quests, guilds, pets and mounts, and other transitions between world maps, the two games are virtually identical. However, each has a few things that the other doesn't. Tree of Saviour has a system where you can choose a class, like swordsman, etc. But there are hidden classes within that tree that you can bolt on that allow you different additional attacks and different stats. The levelling is ridiculously higher in Tree of Saviour, with levels seeming to cap around 100 in MapleStory and some fools dancing around at level 420 in Tree of Saviour. Let's put it this way, I've got about 60-70 to 70 hours in MapleStory 2 and I've managed to reach a character to level 50. I've played 10 hours of Tree of Saviour and I have a level 60 character. So yeah. Attribute points are a thing in both, but Tree of Saviour has a system where you buy your attribute points with money instead of just earning them. Tree of Saviour contains world bosses, however it doesn't highlight them very obviously. I got a message a couple of times saying a boss would be arriving soon, but no info on when or where it was on the map. The first few story bosses are pretty easily beaten, all having similar style attacks that are very easily evaded. However, the bosses do get harder as you level up. 
Both Maple Story and Tree of Saviour have deeper actions, like enchanting weapons and armor, and Tree of Saviour has something to do with cards and stuff. They both have ranked leagues that you can fight in as a guild or an individual, etc, etc. It would take hours to list everything that's involved. My biggest pros for Tree of Saviour include the music and the art. The music is almost like club rave music for the levels, but they like to get the guitar out for the bosses and the intro screen. I did have a bit of a jitter with the graphics load for one of the cutscenes, and I do get lag occasionally, but it's not unworkable. The background and character art is really nice and well done, and the animations are smooth. I like the concept of the subclasses, as it gives you the opportunity to access tons of extra abilities, though you are only limited to changing to three subclasses, if I read it right. It has less of the general piffle in it that MapleStory does, things like the farming and the crafting. You can do crafting in Tree of Saviour, but it's not made out to be a main focus, and the side quests are a bit more purposeful in general than some of the ones in MapleStory. I like that for the majority of the time the world enemies don't harass you, you can just run through them without being constantly attacked. It makes movement around the map just so much easier. You also have a mini-map that doesn't just show a localised area. It also shows you where objectives are very clearly, even in areas you haven't discovered yet. The game is pretty easy to navigate and understand, and you can progress fast enough with your character to keep it interesting. It's also very satisfying, the way that the monsters explode. The biggest cons of the game include advertising stuff you can buy with payment methods that you can't access easily in-game. I think that's where the microtransactions come in, but I'm still not really sure because it doesn't explain it all that well. Another con is that the help menus sometimes go away too fast, as they can pop up whilst you're in the middle of combat, and by the time you're done saving your own life, the tutorial has gone away and you don't know what to do. You can find it again in the menu, but it kind of defeats the object of having pop-ups if people don't have time to read them. Another issue, which I think MapleStory had too, is that the enemies start chasing you and respawning fairly quickly, which, when you have timed actions to do, can be rather annoying. You can kill an enemy, start an action that has a 10 second timer, then get broken from your action after 9.8 seconds and have to do the whole thing again. Also, the concept of repeatable quests in Tree of Saviour. You only really fully complete the quest after you do it five times. Now, I get layered quests, like start here for part one, go over there, do that for part two, etc etc, but repeating the exact same task five times? There's not a lot of gain in that. That's a bit of a bother. And I have a bit of a quibble with the way that the overall map is laid out. You can be in areas of map that are relevant to your level, you can see the ranking of your advised level for each different piece of map, but those bits of map link to other pieces of map that are horrendously out-leveled for your character, and you can move into those areas, but giving you the access to do so, you usually just end up dying, because I passed over to a piece of map that contained unhittable enemies. I did run around to try and see what was even in the area. I found a bit of crystal, and then promptly got hit by an explosion that not only incinerated me, but also my ghost that clawed its way out of my confused corpse, screaming for any god that would listen. Just like MapleStory, this could be a pretty hefty review, but I can lean on my previous one, which for some damn reason has got monstrous amounts of views and makes me want to cry because the quality is so bad and I'm ashamed I ever released it onto YouTube. So I can cut this review down and say that Tree of Saviour is essentially MapleStory 2, but with different ways to gain skills, more sophisticated art, better music, more focus on the main quest line, less farm animals in my house, less mini games, and more microtransactions and confusing ways to buff your character that you can't really use until you're a stupidly high level. One has some things that the other doesn't, but I think when it boils down to it, they're really quite similar, and if you like one, you'll probably like the other, and it'll be up to you if having two slightly different games is too much of the same thing. It's like buying two identical t-shirts, but one of them has red stripes and one of them has blue stripes. It'll show up different and work with different stuff, but it's really just the same thing, and it all depends on how many samey t-shirts you think it's acceptable to own. However, the good thing both games have in common is that they're fun, and if you're poor and have free time to kill, they're absolutely the best games to do that because there's just so much in them. So, on par with MapleStory, I will rate Tree of Saviour with an 8 out of 10.